significance, if you will. But yeah, you got to see, I mean, Shinsuke, if you've not seen the wrestle kingdom nine entrance for Shinsuke, just the entrance will set Ooh. the tone to let you know, Hey, this is, this is different. Big time. And, then the, and then the bell rang and, and it's just, it's, it's different. And I'm glad to see that, you know, maybe with triple H steering the ship a little bit, we've seen more of that Shinsuke. Like they're allowing him to do promos in Japanese now and just doing subtitles. And I thought I for that. a long time, that was the right way to do it. I love that. Yes. I love yes. that. It's authentic. It's all, it authenticates it. It validates it. It's like the same concept as we say selfishly for maybe Shivani and Jr. to do the sting final. Uh, you know, we're selfish. We want to do that match. It's important for our, for us to finish out this journey with him. And remember, you know, uh, Tony started early with sting, but not as early as I did. Cause I started with sting when he was the ultimate warriors tag team partner as the dingo warrior and, uh, the blade runners, uh, back for cowboy. I was there the night the cowboy pulled a uh, warrior aside and fired his ass. Just wasn't going to put up with this petulant bullshit. And, uh, his, he always had an ego problem. Sting did not. Sting wanted to learn sting gravitated to the Eddie Gilbert's of the world, uh, and, uh, and all these other veteran stars that cowboy had, had assembled, uh, and kept learning. That's why I'll always, if, if he somewhere along the way, I need to write down a list of my most admired talents. Yes. Not just because they were great at doing a drop kick or a hurricane Rana, but because of their integrity and their character. Things like that, that if you're an administrator, you covet. And I've always coveted my opportunities to work with Sting. And, uh, you know, I, I can't remember what last night. He, he, he's the only guy in the business that calls me Rossi. <laughs> he always has. I don't know why. And I don't care. It's great. It's different. So, uh, but the, that, that whole thing in Greensboro is going to be so, so exciting. Hope I'm not building myself up for a disappointment, but I don't know. Oh, Something else that, uh, we got a lot of questions about Ribera Francis Reyes wants to know, did you ever get to eat at Ribera and, uh, what was your go-to order? <laughs> no, Francis, I didn't, uh, I never got to go to that place. Uh, I've heard of it. It's a very famous place for the wrestling world. Uh, but I don't, I don't, I don't think I've ever been there. It blows uh, me away. I, I just assumed you would have been there. Yeah. Well, me too. In, in hindsight. So, but no, I, I, I didn't, I, but I enjoy the culture there so much. The fans are so passionate. You know, I remember walking from the hotel, uh, to, uh, the arena and, uh, being around all the fans and stuff. I, I kind of, to many of them, I went unnoticed, which is fine. The only thing they could pick me out of the crowd was I had a hat on. Uh, but I, I, I. I, I enjoyed that, that whole newness, the culture, the fans. Then you find out, like you said earlier, when the bell rings, it's pro wrestling again. Yes. It's really good pro wrestling again, but it's pro wrestling again, where talents work a little snug, not stupid, not careless, but snug. And they tell great stories. They connect the dots. They move it forward. And it, uh, it, and usually it results in a hell of a product. Going to be a hell of a product this weekend. The NFL playoffs are here. I'm fired up. I know you are too, Jim. We're both football junkies. Let's yep. run through the, uh, the wild card round. Let's let you get some picks here. We got the Cleveland Browns playing the Houston Texans. Texans are at home and, uh, the Browns are coming in a two and a half point favorite. You like the Browns or the Texans here? Well, for Jerry Lawler's sake, I like, uh, I hope the Browns uh, perform well. This game is all about, uh, CJ Stroud to me, Connie, uh, he's having a hell of a year. Now that he's healthy. He's a rookie quarterback. This lighten it up. So if, if, uh, if the Texans can keep Stroud vertical on his spot, so to speak, uh, I like Houston winning at home. Uh, I find it somewhat insulting. At least that's how I'd use it. Uh, if I was coaching that they're coming to our, our house and they're the favorite, what's up with that shit. So let's change that, that, that philosophy. So I think Houston will win the game. 
I'd take the points, but, uh, uh, I don't know how long this Joe Flacco thing is going to last. You know, he, he may have a hell of a game. I hope that he does, but I, I'm, I'm thinking that Houston can win primarily because of the home field advantage. I'm pulling for the Texans as well. I'm pulling for Domenico Ryan's. I think he's, uh, one of my favorite Alabama players of all time. And uh, I'm thrilled with him in his first year making the playoffs. So let's go Texans. I'll take Texans and points boy. Saturday night is going to be an interesting game. I love the Miami dolphins. And of course their Alabama quarterback, Mr. Tua coming to town. They're a four and a half point underdog. The chiefs are hosting. They're a four and a half point favorite. And somehow this might actually be the coldest game in NFL history. Yeah. It's supposed to be five degrees on Saturday night. The wind chill will be minus 10. And for that, I think I like the chiefs. What say you, I think, uh, the, the weather's a big story here. Yes. It's a huge story and turnovers turnovers are inevitable Saturday night in Kansas city. This is one of those situations where TV really rules the roost because in all honesty, uh, the Kansas city chiefs game should be played in the daytime this time of the year. So, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I, I believe that, uh, that's just a TV's decision because it is a very desirable game. It will get a great rating. Yeah. People like you and me are curious to see how the weather is going to affect them. Sure. It will, it will affect them, but I think that Kansas city, uh, it will have less effect on their game. Then it will the dolphins who I think will be adversely challenged by the weather. So, uh, cause they're not used to playing in it. They're not used to practicing in it. Somebody said they were practicing all week outside and, and down in Miami and it was like in the seventies or eighties or something warm. Uh, but it ain't going to be warm Saturday night. No, it is so not. we'll see how they all respond to that, uh, uh, mother nature element. Remember Conrad mother nature doesn't do any jobs. Undefeated, undefeated. So we'll see who can, uh, who can work their way out of that conundrum. Uh, the chiefs or the dolphins. I like the chiefs. Probably going to be a chilly day when the bills are hosting the Steelers this Sunday, the bills are a 10 point favorite Steelers, a 10 point underdog at Sunday noon kickoff here central. What do you think bills or Steelers? Uh, I think the bills are hot. The quarterback's playing pretty well. He's not self-destructing. He's got a powerful arm. Does the quarterback, what's his name? Allen. Yep. Uh, uh, and a, he's a good player, big, strong son of a bitch. Uh, so, uh, I, I, I like the bills. I think they're, okay. they're peaking at the right time. Uh, and they're playing at home. I make a big deal out of playing at home, but even though you're a pro playing at home, sleeping in your own bed and so forth and so on is a, a viable consideration. So therefore I like, uh, the bills to win. Let's talk a little bit about, uh, the game that I know a lot of our listeners are going to be excited about the Dallas Cowboys. They're hosting the Packers. It's a three 30 central kickoff this Sunday. The Packers are a seven and a half point underdog. I like the Cowboys minus seven and a half. What do you think? I, I see, I read a lot about the football like you do. Uh, I, uh, hear all this rumblings that, uh, this could be a trap game for the Cowboys. Yes. If they were playing, if they were playing in green Bay, I'm with you, but they're not. And we all know how well Dallas has played at home. Uh, the home field advantage for them is very significant. So whether they cover the spread or not, I think the Cowboys will win the ball game. It's all, it's all, a lot of this depends on how well Jordan love plays. Yes. You get the quarterback off his spot. You make him move around, make him uncomfortable. That was always the game plan on Tom Brady. We got to keep get, getting to move around cause he's not the most athletic quarterback in the league. So, uh, but I, I like, uh, I, I, I just, I think the weather has a big issue this, this time of the year. And again, you know, having that Kansas city game at night, where it's going to be the coldest and the conditions are going to be the worst seems to me to be, uh, not a real great decision, but I understand why they're doing it. It's a TV game and TV runs the game. Prime time is what we'll be seeing for the Rams and the lions. The lions are hosting. They're a three point favorite 
Uh, this is a tight one. What do you think? Rams or Lions in Detroit? Should be a hell of a game. The battle of those two quarterbacks who have a history with the, in the Detroit market. Uh, I like the head coach at uh, Detroit. I think this guy's a gut. He's got what it takes. He looks like a football coach. He acts like a football coach. He talks like a football coach. And the fact that they're playing at home, you can only imagine the level of enthusiasm and excitement is going to be in Detroit because they're playing their first playoff game at home and forever. So I, I, I'm a lean toward, uh, Detroit, but it won't be easy. Sean Payton, or excuse me, uh, uh, the coach at, uh, what's his name at, uh, LA Sean, uh, shit. I can't think of his name right now. It slips in my mind. Uh, he's a good coach. Sean McVay is the Rams coach. Yeah. That's the only thing I try to, what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Sean, Sean McVay, really good coach. He'll have his team ready to go. They seem to be peaking at the right time. They got some young receivers that are playing very well that, and some of them to be quite honest with you, I had never even heard of, but, uh, McVay has made them into a, a good team. And again, one of the arts of coaching is to get your team to peak at the right time. And maybe that's for LA. Maybe they're, uh, the Rams are peaking at the right time. They will be well prepared. There's no doubt about that. But I do think the home field advantage playing in Detroit, uh, all that good stuff is a significant, a significant consideration to think about. So with that, I'm hanging my black hat on the, on the lions. Last, but certainly not least Monday night, all eyes will be on Tampa Bay as they host the Eagles. The Eagles have, uh, stumbled a bit lately, but they're still coming in a three point favorite. You like the bucks or the Eagles on Monday night? Well, I, I, I was a big Eagles fan because of some former Sooners on their team, like Lane Johnson, uh, right tackle number 65. He's an all pro this year. The two all pro tackles voted by the players were both former Sooners. Trent Williams, the left tackle, who's a beast and uh, what a sweetheart of a guy. It's hard to believe he's such an animal when you talk to him. And then Lane is a friend of mine. Lane has been to my house in Oklahoma and he's a fan, a big wrestling fan. And, uh, so both those cats were the first team picks it, uh, on the all pro team offensively or right tackle and left tackle respectively. So, uh, I'm, a I, I, I I, I like, uh, I don't know. Well, it's a hard one. My choices are, Hey, look, I, I'm a Baker Mayfield guy. He's a sooner and I'm loyal to my sooners. Everybody knows ad nauseum. I get it. I get it. But uh, if Baker gets hot, he can lead any team to win. Uh, but I don't know where we are with the Eagles. Who are the Eagles? You know, who are we? They're just not playing well. And, uh, they're beat up, banged up. So I, I'm, I'm going to lean toward Tampa Bay to win this thing. 